Hello, interweb. That's right, Godot Blitz tutorial. I am Dequigs. Today we're going to go ahead and discuss how to make a parallax background. Let's get to it. Right here we have a completed parallax background with three layers. Some key things to note here is A, the main node is a parallax background node. And then these children nodes is a parallax layer combined with a sprite underneath of it. And if we look here, this uppermost layer is just a flat white that I've actually colorized. The next layer is another grayscale texture that I've again colorized. And the final one is a grayscale texture that I colorized. Um, the reason for this is like sometimes you can have some performance issues. I do things in grayscale when I can and colorize them in engine. It's the best for performance. You don't have to do it like that. But what you do have to do is ensure, be absolutely positive that your parallax background texture is two times your game's dimensions. So if we go in here into project settings, and then if we go down to display and into window, we can see that what our width and heights are. Most people are going to have edited this. Want to be absolutely positive that your textures are at least two times your default width and height. If you don't do that, I don't know what it is or why, but the texture will load incorrectly. Sometimes it won't load as you're approaching the limits of your camera. In addition, when it does finally kick in and load, the uh, game drops frames. Um, it might just be me, but I'm pretty sure it's a good Doe engine thing, so stay away from that. So let's go ahead and make one from scratch real quick. Um, we're going to add a node. We're gonna click on a parallax background under canvas layer. And to get started, we're just gonna go ahead and add a parallax layer under node 2D. And then under that, we need to go ahead and add a sprite. All right, simple as that, pretty simple. Um, what we wanna do now, go ahead and uh, attach your first texture, and this is gonna be your most furthest away texture. And you wanna go ahead and attach that to your sprite. All right, and now once you have that, you always need to make sure that the top left corner of your sprite matches up with a zero, zero position. So what you wanna go ahead and do, go into the sprite, go into your offset, and turn off centered. Once you turn off centered, you should get something like this. If you go into parallax layer, there's some things to note. Uh, primarily your motion. Motion is, a, is something new that you're not gonna see in other nodes. So motion scale one to one. Basically, this is the, this is the default amount that it'll scroll. Um, I'm not really sure what units this is, but basically if you set it to zero, that layer will not move at all. If you set it to one, it'll move. If you set it to two, it'll move twice as fast. If you set it to 0 0.5, it'll move half as fast as one. Um, simple as that. What units are they? I don't know. If you know, leave it in the comments. The next thing is offset. Really, you don't typically have to worry about that. It, it could depend. I haven't really used it. Offset is just going to um, change this layer's uh, position relative to the overall background. So next, parallax background doesn't really do much unless you have multiple layers. So let's go ahead and add another layer. And actually, what I'm going to do is just duplicate this one. Um, now we can go into this sprite, go ahead and load up a new texture for it. And now I'm not liking how that is. I'm going to, whoops, I am going to uh, just go ahead and drag this up here. I actually want this layer on top of that. And now we're gonna go ahead and set this sprite up um, in similar fashion. So we can see, as we can see, I actually used one of my old defunct, um, not correct, Save patterns, yeah. So you can see here, this isn't stretching out far enough. 800 by 600. Um, that's not the correct size. 1600 by 960 is correct. I thought I had something up here. All right, so that should fix that. I apologize. I loaded up one of the wrong ones that I made before I realized how to do it correctly. Um, so now once we got that, we can go ahead and play around with this motion scale. So we're gonna set this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I'm gonna save this as parallax background test, for example, I guess. Now, just so we have some differentiation, I'm actually gonna move this back over here, uh, back over here. Oops. I'm gonna leave that there, and then um, I'm gonna take this top layer, and I'm just going to adjust its visibility a little bit so we can actually see it move. And this gives us like kind of like a glacial pattern. All right, so now that we've got that done, we'll save it. And I'm going to pop this into my level. So Demo Proto is the level that we're messing with. We're going to take Cave Op Test, and uh, I'm just going to delete that. That's, that's the current uh, 
parallax background that I have hooked up. And I'm going to go into where I saved my other parallax background and just drag and drop. And now, as you can see, we see it back here. Now, if I go ahead and load the game, theoretically, we have a parallax background that doesn't look right at all. All right, so what we just saw is what happens when you forget to set up your mirroring. So we're going to go in here and set up our mirroring. Mirroring allows the sprite to like replicate. Basically, once it gets to the end, it knows to, you know, copy it. So we go into our parallax layer, hit motion, we go to mirroring. Right now it's set to zero, that means it doesn't repeat. And we just want to set this to the same as our sprite size. So we can set this to 1600 by 960. And then we go down here and we set the same thing, 1600 by 960. And you should get something like this. You should see your pattern doubled in size. You hit play. You start the game and voila, now you have it. One of the things you can do if you have a dynamic camera that changes position, does, alter, or does alternate zooms, sometimes you might want to play around with ignore camera zoom. Um, what this will basically do is I'll show you. When we zoom in now, which uh, like this, if you zoom in, you get this kind of weird effect there. And if we turn off ignore camera zoom and we do the same thing, as you can see, the parallax background doesn't seem to move in relation to the foreground, and that's essentially what that does. The next thing to note, um, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to mess around with the scale. We have this at 0 0.5. Um, we're going to go ahead and up this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what uh, this layer looks like at 0 0.5. You see it's barely moving in relation to the background. But now let's go ahead and bump this up to like 4, and we should see it moving a lot. There we go. Look at that. And that's how you can kind of simulate like fast levels or something. Um, if we go down to one, which is the default speed, our background right here is moving at one. So then we'll just get two static, like they'll move, but they're static in relation to each other. And then, you know, any combination of the two. And with that, you should have everything you need to create your own parallax background layer. I didn't go too much in depth. I just covered the basics. Um, if you did like this, if it did help you, go ahead, leave a thumbs up, smash your computer monitor. That really helps the channel. Check out some of the Reddits, the Twitches, the Twitters, the Facebooks. Check all of those out. Um, and be sure to subscribe. And until next time, I have been D Quigs. This has been Deranged Turtle Games Blitz Tutorial. I'll catch you next time. Peace.